Hello everyone. I'm here with Elitsa from the OFT Bulgarian team in Sofia. And we're going to do a little interview and question and answer about original feeling touch. This uh, uh, healing modality, this revolutionary healing modality that uh, I was inspired to create. So hi Elitsa. Hi Andrew. I'm very excited to be here, very delighted. I don't usually go on camera, but I feel original feeling touches uh, something that I would like to, to spread more and talk about it and let people know because I think it's very evolutionary, it's very healing definitely and it has helped me a lot in my life and I'm very inspired by it. So, um, so happy to be here with you and ask a little bit about it so that other people can learn uh, what it is and how it can support them. So can you can you tell me how would you describe what is Orphan? Yeah, great question. Uh, so the first thing I, I, I guess I want to say is what it's not. It's not a therapy. It's not a massage technique. It's it's completely different to anything as far as I can see that is out in the in the healing modality field. Um, it's very aligned with the teachings of the jinkies because the jinkies teaching is that if you transform the shadow in your DNA, then you will release your natural wonder and gifts into the world. And OFT is really a way to hold space for other people so that the shadow, the constrictions that are in our, in the body can be transmuted and transformed and, and released back into someone's life as light. And it really is just a way of holding space or holding support, unconditional support for another person. So it's, it's, we're not trying to fix people. Uh, we're not trying to change them. We're just really supporting them, you know, and this is such an important thing, you know, to be supported, to feel that support, you know, to feel that you won't be judged. You won't be shamed. You won't be made to feel guilty. You won't be told to, you know, to, to, to push yourself, you know, it's, it's, it's none of those things. It's this, it's this incredible way to hold space for another person. And what you learn in OFT is not just, is not just, you know, working with the body. It's also a, a way of life of how to be with other people and how to be with life. You know, it's, it's really, it's really the main, this is the best definition of OFT. It's learning the principles of life and learning how to be human in life. I think that's the best definition of OFT. <laughs> oh, thank you. I can share a little bit from my own experience. Mm -hmm. uh, OFT gave me mm -hmm. uh, as, as participant, as receiving an OFT session. Mm -hmm. So usually in uh, my daily life, I can be so busy, so much. Uh, doing, doing, doing many things. So I maybe don't have so often opportunity to have a pause and stop and contemplate. It's not something natural, but this is what I receive when I have an OFT session. Uh, I stop and, and then uh, as the body relaxes, all these feelings and I actually meet myself, what is my inner state. It naturally comes to the surface. And I'm always so surprised by the depth that I can reach and meet myself while I'm receiving an OFT session. It's, it's very interesting. A and then all these, if you want to call it shadows or difficult feelings or things that are really of interest and are going on inside of me that I didn't have time to to look at or digest, I'm given this space to digest. Mm -hmm. And it's always a very deep journey uh, for me, receiving OFT. And also I always learn new things about mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. And usually after, after an OFT session, I feel very grateful to mm -hmm. take on the time to, to be with myself and really look inside uh, what, what's there. So I also feel that OFT and Jinky is beautifully aligned 
because many times um, when we work with the jinkies, it can be very mental, especially at the beginning. It can be very mental. We forget that um, these gifts, uh, they are inside of our body. And if we don't release these constrictions, uh, then it's just some nice information that we know. So, uh, can I ask you another question? Sure. So, um, why do we have these suppressed feelings? Why di does it happen that we have some things that are suppressed in us and that makes us suffer? <laughs> Uh, is yes. It our illness, or illness is something that we just, um, for example, through our DNA, it's passed to us. So, what do you think illness is? Oh, those those are deep questions. Okay, so I'll do my I do my best to answer. So the first part, like, why do we have this? Um, if we just look at our childhood, you know, and how open, you know, young babies are, young children are, we're actually taking everything in, we're, you know, we're, we're just, we're like sponges, you know, especially in the first two, three, four years of life, you know, so we're in our parents' aura, you know, and of course, anything that's going on with our parents, you know, as a baby, we take it in, you know, we take in that, uh, those memories, those, those impulses. So, so there's, there's that aspect of the fact, the environment that we were brought up in, you know, none of us had, you know, I mean, our parents also have shadows, right? And their parents had shadows. And so this gets passed down, you know? Um, but from the bigger perspective, of course, our soul really chooses, you know, the parents and, you know, the family that we, we come into. So, so there's, a, there's a divine perfection with it, but that doesn't take away the the pain of that experience you know and so from my perspective you know all symptoms whether that's a serious illness or a so-called accident you know like accidents or heart attacks or things that seem to come out of the blue there's there's no real accident in life you know and this is one of the hardest things to really transmit to people because it seems like we live in this world that's very random and very like things are just happening and it doesn't seem fair that certain things happen to very good people for example so this is a huge you know what you're asking me is a it's a huge question you know it's really i mean it's a fantastic question right um i guess the best way i can explain this is maybe tell a little story from my own contraction from my own experience so i woke up um the other day with a very strong feeling that when i was very young i was verbally abused and it was very clear for me, you know, that this was something coming out of my DNA, coming out of my childhood. And I really saw that this was my experience and why, and maybe people would be very surprised to hear this about me, but actually I can be quite fearful in front of people, you know, especially if people are serious, you know, my, the little child in me is like, feels like I'm going to be shamed, you know. And uh, I finally managed to, you know, get in touch with that and, and feel that, you know, and actually, as I started to release it, as I started to release this shame, and I had some experiences in my life that allowed me to experience this shame. So I want to tell a story. Uh, and so I hope your listeners will, will be patient. But basically, you know, I'm in a relationship and uh, I love to take care of my, my partner, you know, and so oftentimes we go traveling together. So I'm always buying the tickets. I'm organizing the tickets. I'm, I'm doing everything so she doesn't have to worry about that. You know, and I, I enjoy that. And then I realized we were in, uh, I think we were in Bucharest or somewhere. And I, I thought to myself, oh, my God, does Irina have a ticket to go home? <laughs> and I looked through all my emails. No ticket. And I was like, oh, my God. I forgot to book a ticket, you know? And so this was my mind, you know? And so I thought, okay, I better book a ticket for her. And, you know, and so I, I, I found a ticket. And of course, when you buy a ticket on the day, it's very expensive, right? So that didn't feel so good, you know, but I, I just had to do it, you know? And in the end I called her and, and, and of course it was a different time to when I told her. And so I had to sort of admit, and I said, look, I, I think I forgot to buy your ticket. And I, I feel a lot of shame right now. <laughs> you know, I feel really like silly or, you know, and she was so great. She was so soft with me. She was so gentle. And, and as she was like that, like all these tears came, you know, and, and it was like my shame was healed in that moment. 
And the funny thing was, was that actually I had bought the ticket, but I'd sent it to her email and I completely forgot. So the point I'm trying to say here is that that experience had to happen for me because life wanted me to heal that shame inside of me, you know, and, and this is, this is something that you have to experience to really understand. But I know without a shadow of a doubt that everything that happens to us, absolutely everything is under a, dis, a divine flow. It, there's, there's no accident. There's no, it, it's all there for our higher purpose. I, I, I know that in, in my cellular memory. I just know it. And, um, and I, I guess I developed OFT to, to, to educate people about this and to really create a space for that. So I hope that's, that's, it's, it's a long explanation because it's, it's a very deep question. You know? So uh, what you're saying is that we have these illnesses and these states within our body in order to heal a deeper aspect that we are not aware of. Yes, and I would say that before we actually manifest physical illnesses or, you know, or mental disease or depression or whatever it is, actually the, the seeds of that were, were, were placed in us very, at a much earlier stage. You know? So this is why oftentimes when people come to receive RFT from me, I ask them, especially if they're dealing with something very physical and something very difficult and challenging, I'll always ask them, you know, when did this first start? And so usually it's back a few years. And then I always ask them, and what happened emotionally to you just before this, or maybe a year before? And invariably, there's some traumatic event that they couldn't digest emotionally. You know, invariably, that's always there. Uh, uh, and of course, for some of the events, like the one I described about my children being verbally abused, sometimes it just takes time for us to discover some of these very deeper traumas that are inside of us. And, uh, and there's no rush with it. You know, it's not like, you know, one of the principles of RFT is that we, we can't force that healing. We can't make healing happen because the body is more intelligent than my hands. You know, the body is much more intelligent than my hands. And the body keeps us away from these very painful feelings and experiences until we have a support system in place, until we have enough maturity and enough awareness to actually go into these difficult experiences. So that's another real description of what RFT is. It's about learning how to hold space for people so that they can go back in time and, and relive some of these more, you know, challenging experiences. Yeah. yeah. And one of the, the special things which I feel are important in OFT is that in the OFT we give back somehow, we remind ourselves that the body has the intelligence to heal itself. Yeah. So we are just allowing the space for the body to feel safe to be able to let go or just to release what it is ready to let go. That's right. That's right. Why that it is uh, such a gentle approach, but also very powerful approach. Many yes. Times, yeah. see how, how do we heal? What, what do we know about healing nowadays? If I have a symptom, I will go to a doctor and the doctor will tell me what the illness is and then he will prescribe me some medicine. I see that nowadays people are more and more aware of the different potentials and different approaches uh, to healing. Uh, but can you tell me a little bit how OFT is different than all these other um, all these other systems like Reiki or energy massage? Uh, because um, in the OFT we have somebody who is touching the body, uh, so. Is it something different than Reiki or massage? Can you explain a little bit? What's yeah, I, I think the main difference is that we teach the principles of healing in OFT. So we really teach, like you said, like if we cut our finger, for example, if you know we, we, we keep it clean, it will heal on its own. You know? If we break a bone, eventually it will heal. You know, Of course, we can have stints put in place to assist the healing process, but there is this natural intelligence in life to heal. And I think what's missing in many modalities is this understanding of the healing principles uh, behind life, you know? Uh, and so this is why OFT is very in alignment with the Jinkies because, because 
we, we this life inside of us wants to fulfill its potential the life in us wants to fulfill its potential everything in existence is looking to fulfill its potential right a seed of an oak tree eventually becomes an oak tree and this is in all of nature you see this in all of nature so every human being is like that we we the life in us wants to express its fullest potential in us so this is one of the things that i that i teach in oft and why it's different to say something like reiki or massage is that there's a deep deep understanding of this how the life in each of us wants to become whole wants to become our highest potential that that is and that's a natural process that's not something you can force it's not like you can tell the oaks you know the seed in the ground come on hurry up and grow get there get there get there it, it takes its time and it unfolds at the right time and we forget that we're the same so if it is uh, so natural for the body to heal, why, why it is so difficult for us to heal? <laughs> what is your... <laughs> oh my God, again, such a, such a fantastic question, Alita. Um, I think it's because we have a mind, number one. <laughs> so we have a mind that can resist our experience. Again, if we go back to childhood, as a small child, we didn't, we didn't resist our experience. We let everything in. We felt everything really fully. And, and we were really allowing life to flow inside of us. So I think this is one of the number one reasons. It's like our mind. You know, our mind is an incredible tool. It's an incredible gift. But I don't think we've seen the full potential of the mind. That you know, the mind evolutionary is just in the beginning stages. It's it's only twenty thousand. The four, you know, the four is only twenty thousand years old, right? The intelligence in our body is so much more intelligent and wise. But we live in such a society where we we give so much authority and so much power to the mind. So I, I would say the main the main resistance to healing is within our mind. Yeah, yeah because uh, through the mind. Uh, we maybe suppress the body and the feelings that are in the body. Maybe yes. we have strategies yeah. in order yeah. to feel what is uncomfortable for us. Yeah. So let me go back to that experience with the shame, right? With my girlfriend. I had another experience, very similar, you know, it, within the same week. I was arranging a, a, a vacation for friends of mine from the States and we were taking, we were hiring a car in Bulgaria. We went to the mountains together. And when I get towards, when I get to the, uh, the rental car place, I realized I'd forgotten my license. So again, I had this opportunity to feel this shame. And so I just very naturally, like a child, expressed it to, to my friends, you know, and I said, look, I feel so much shame right now. And of course, the tears just came, you know, these tears, you know, these tears, like I did something wrong, I made a mistake, you know. And it was amazing, because as soon as I'd expressed the tears, as soon as I'd expressed myself like a child, the shame was over with within five minutes it was it was completely gone and, and i felt really good you know and and we have so much of that inside of us we, we, we're not aware of you know uh, and of course uh, oft helps uh, creates a safe space where we can actually feel that I, I have a lot of experience in allowing myself to feel those feelings you know but that's been taken over many years of meditation contemplating the gene keys and so forth receiving oft you know so but I see very clearly that when we allow these feelings without judging them, without trying to suppress them, we actually heal very, very easily and very, very quickly. And it's very natural. And again, you see this in children, right? They can be so angry, you know, and then suddenly so ecstatic and so happy, right? And you will never really see a young child depressed. That is an adult symptom. It's not, you don't see a young child depressed. You'll see them angry. You'll see them frustrated, but you won't see depression in a small child. So can we say that healing is when we allow a life force to move through freely through the body? That's it. That's it. That's it. Without judging any of it, without, without like, yeah, because we judge it so much or we, we repress it or we try and blame others. Yeah, absolutely. It's allowing the energy to flow. You could say all disease is the chi, or in, in, in our tradition, we say the yin and the yang. You know, the, the yang flows and becomes the yin. 
the yin flows and becomes the yang, right? So, and so we have these experiences in our life where the yin and the yang, they can't transform into each other. They get stuck. And that, that can be at the emotional level. It, it can be in the body level. It can be in the mental level. But it's the same thing. You're absolutely right. Healing is the allowing of the life force to flow. Perfect. 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 You're a great example. <laughs> a good teacher of RFT. <laughs> What are the stages of healing? Because um, if if I am sick, you know, mm. if I have some, some symptoms, mm-hmm. I agree many times shame can come, you know, oh, I did not uh, do something right, uh, I, how, you know, I'm doing something wrong, the illness is showing up. So definitely shame is one of the symptoms uh, that when we are not ready to, to feel it through mm. us, it can mm-hmm. cause some prolonged prolongment of our sickness or or something but okay what are the stages then yeah. how can we help ourselves in a healing process great so this is what we teach on level one with oft the four stages of healing and the first stage is awareness oh awareness i've got these symptoms awareness that i have something that's not quite okay you know or i have a pain or or i'm always shouting at my boyfriend you know there's so many different levels of symptoms and we become aware of them that is the first stage we become aware and for many of us we can stay in that stage for years you know literally for years so we're aware of it but we don't we don't have the tools and we don't have the understanding of how we're actually going to to shift that and to transform that so the second stage is actually a very important stage and it's and it's what i think in most other therapies is missed out And that is the stage of allowing and confusion, allowing the confusion that you don't know. You know, so confusion is always the second stage. And and once we get to that place, once we become humble enough just to recognize, oh my God, you know, this keeps happening. I'm not sure what's going on, right? But, But I'm gonna just stay with the confusion of this. I'm not gonna look for a solution. And 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 that's what happens in OFT, is actually we we validate the symptoms first and foremost, and then we allow the person to go into that place of the unknown, of that confusing. And then it's out of that that the breakthrough can come. The next stage is breakthrough. But oftentimes in most therapies, we try and jump from awareness to breakthrough without allowing this uncertainty, this not knowing. So, you know, our nervous system is orientated in time and space to keep our identity firm. So this is why when we have a symptom, it's so challenging because we only know that symptom. We don't know the new person we're yet going to be. And so that's why it's confusing. So we we have to give that space in our life to have that time of uncertainty where the new person that that we want to become is not present yet. And then once we, once we allow that, that will often allow the breakthrough. And once the breakthrough, happens new energy comes in then we have to integrate it which is also another challenging thing because we become a new person and maybe the people around us won't recognize who we are and won't validate who we are then so that that is also a challenging stage so it's awareness confusion breakthrough and integration these are these are the four stages that all of us have to go through you could go through all of those four stages actually quite quickly and many people do in an oft session or it may take a certain amount of time depending on your level of support and your level of awareness and and trust in in the life force so those are the four stages yeah. is this what what an OFT therapist does and the OFT guide do they support us through these uh, difficult phases of yes symptoms yeah. and then having the confusion and some yeah. Experiences that come up inside of us as we meet them. So not, not, not only do they support you, but they have to actually go through their own healing process. So that's part of the training program, is that everyone who's an OFT guide has to go through that process. So that's why they receive OFT. That's why they actually go into their own healing process because you can't take somewhere where you, someone else where you haven't been. It's impossible. You know, you're, you're, you, you can't. You know, if you're dealing with shame, for example, and you haven't resolved that or you, you're not okay with it, you, you can't help another person who has shame. It's, it's impossible because you, your, your energy body's not resonating, you know, as that. 
So this is why I'm always telling people not to be in a hurry to try and be this great healer or something. It, it, there's no hurry with it. Um, I was guilty of that in the beginning. You know, I was always trying to rush ahead and, you know, and, and push through my development and try and speed it up. And, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work because it's not integrated, you know. So, yes, this is a very important question. So all, everyone who trains with this program, they have to go through their own healing process. And then they can hold space for others. And, and it's, you know, we just, as you know, we just had six uh, OFTE profession, professional guides qualify here in Bulgaria. And I was so proud of them because, because they really know how to hold space. And so I'm, I'm so grateful about that, you know. And there is also some technique in the OFTE. There mm -hmm. is a touch the body mm -hmm. is this difficult to learn which which touch sorry the OFT touch because you know we are touching the body is yes difficult to learn? no it's not difficult it's not difficult to learn it's it's, it's 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 like i said you know one of the examples i use when we meet a friend and we just touch them and we say hey how are you or we give them a hug there's no intention in our hug you know we're just happy to see the person we're just we're neutral, you know, like we're, how are you? You know, we just touch someone. But for some reason, when we go to a therapist, you know, the therapist is very serious and he's using all these techniques and, and that is not what we need. You know, this is not what the body needs in my experience. The body doesn't need a touch that is trying to fix. And so the OFT touch is a touch that is listening, that is validating the body. It, 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 it's such an important question. I'm really glad you asked that. Uh, and so, that takes a little while for me to train people who have been on therapy for a long, long time. You know, they've been doing lots of therapy. So I have to train that out of them in a way. So I much prefer working with beginners because they have this innocence to them and I can really share with them that, you know, this, this approach, you know, and the reason it, I discovered that is through my own experience. Of course, I've been doing body work for, I think it's 35 years now, you know, and I've worked on 5,000 people or I mean probably more you know I have a lot of experience with body work and I see that the more I get out of the way and the more I hold this place of not trying to fix someone but just really holding a space of unconditional acceptance that's when real miracles and healing starts to happen it's, it's so beautiful yeah. yeah I agree I agree it's, it's beautiful to witness how the intelligence of the body and how the body knows yeah do you remember do you remember the first oft class we did in bulgaria in sofia we had about 45 people and it was almost like on the second day there was it was like an exorcism happening in the room do you, do you remember that there was so much crying and screaming and i mean if anyone had walked in there but they'd think we were crazy right because the, but there was so much healing in, in the room you know but it was but it was quite strong for people to see that you know but it was just the body releasing what it had suppressed for so long, you know. Do you remember that time? That was really intense, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was difficult sometimes to meet these difficult emotions that we carry for so long on our own. That's right. We don't have the time. We don't take the time. So. Yeah. I, I think it's wonderful that you created this. Um, that this OFT came through you, and it is giving people hope, and also not only hope but the real uh, way of yeah. in dealing with these suppressed emotions or symptoms that we don't know how to face in yeah. order to control. And yeah, I, 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 sorry, Elisa, I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm always evolving OFT and I realize, you know, that I'm going to include now in level one, I'm going to include the bone breathing as well because it's such a, a great embodied practice for people to, to, to discover and it will actually help people go deeper into the relaxation. So I realized that the bone breathing is a very, very important part of OFT. So I'm going to include that in the training um, with this next class coming up. You know, that would be my first time of introducing that. And uh, some people have already done the bone breathing with me, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah, very important. So yeah, it's an ongoing evolution for me. I, I, that's what I love about life, you know, is that it's never static. You know, there's always, there's always something more to integrate and to learn and to share, you know, so yeah. I oh, <laughs> sorry, I interrupted you. I, I apologize. I was just so like, I wanted to express we're going to do bone breathing. <laughs> That's my child. You know, it's like, oh, we're going to do some bone breathing. You know, by the way, I was doing a class here uh, in Denmark and talking about this child and shame and everything. 
And I walked into this class, you know, there's 25 Danish students of mine and people I know, people I don't know. And my God, they were all so serious, you know. I hadn't seen some of them for years, you know. And the little child in me was absolutely terrified. I was like, God, there's all these serious people. <laughs> what am I going to do, you know? And I could feel it inside of me. This little child inside was like terrified, you know. So what I did was I, I was authentic with it. I expressed them. I said, oh, my God, I'm terrified right now. You all look so serious. And they all burst out laughing, you know. It was so nice. And we had such a wonderful weekend from that moment on by me just acknowledging that small child in me that was afraid, you know, in front of all these people, or these serious Danes, I called them, you know. <laughs> you talk about this inner, uh, this small child in us. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. think healing involves somehow reconnection with uh, our child mm -hmm. in us. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's like the, the, yeah, absolutely. Where is my little child? Um, exactly. Exactly. And, and, uh, and it's not that we have to behave like small children, like emoting all over the, the place, but we do need to listen to that little girl or little boy inside of us and acknowledge the feelings, you know. So we have to parent ourselves, basically, you know, but we don't become like, we do become a child, but we come, become like a child in our joy, you know. Like, you can see me, I'm quite excited right now. We're going to do bone breathing. You know, that's the child in me. It's like, wow, we're going to do bone breathing. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> it's something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember what I said a little bit more clearly. Okay. It was about, it was about when, when we have uh, some, some symptoms or some illness, how many times, many times, we we want to hide it in a way because w when we share you know especially with big and more strong illnesses uh, people feel difficult to share because other people start worrying also about them and uh, i feel in oft we give opportunity for a person who is having some symptoms to realize that whatever he's experiencing is not something wrong, it's a part of life, and that he can heal himself. And maybe many times we don't heal because we isolate ourselves. We don't want to acknowledge and validate something that a lot is, uh, you teach us in OFT how to validate our yeah. feelings, other people, and in this way somehow the person opens up when he allows and shares and, and experiences his symptoms in front of other people and see that they are not judging him or her, uh, this is a part of the healing. This is a part of just welcoming this life force, no matter in what way it is coming through us, to, to show up. Yeah, it's, it's, it, thank you for putting that into words, Elisa. You know, I think as well, it's also incredibly challenging for people, for the family members of someone who's dealing with some something in the family, right? So oftentimes all the focus goes on the person who's sick rather than the family itself. And so there's a huge stress when someone in a family is sick and all the other people then that they, they shift their energy away from themselves and they're focusing only on that person who's sick, you know? And so part of my ongoing development of OFT is to create some programs for families who are dealing with someone who's very sick so that they have the educational program to understand that their needs are just as valid in that moment as the person who is sick. And, and this will actually create more balance for the person who's sick in that family. You know? So there's a, there's a real educational program that needs to happen there around this, but you're absolutely right. You know, when we're sick, we can feel guilty. We can feel shame. We can feel a burden you know, for others. Um, so there are many different feelings that come up when we're not so well, right? You know, somebody else to somebody else to heal us. You know, we expect this healing to come from somewhere outside. Yes, as well, which is totally natural when you're suffering and when you're in pain. You know, I recently had two teeth removed, and so <laughs> you know, when you have pain, all you want to do is to have it go away. You know, so I have so much compassion for that. And uh, so, yeah, part of OFT is is educating people about this about this process, you know, and OFT is not, is, is in no way judgmental of, you know, the Western medical model. It's just a very different paradigm to that. 
but I have no judgment against the Western medical paradigm. You know, it's, it can be very effective for certain things and certain people need that, you know? So um, OFT is more, the paradigm is really more about, you know, what is life actually, you know, it's, it's more an understanding about life. It's, it's, it's a completely different paradigm to the medical paradigm, which is just mostly it's just suppressed symptoms, you know, it's, and it's coming from love, you know, all the doctors work incredible hours and, and they're do, and they're doing the best they can, you know, but, uh, but as you see more and more symptoms are coming up that the doctors have no clue what, what's going on. You know, a lot of these autoimmune diseases, you know, so, you know, it's obvious that, the, the current system is is breaking down on some level you know especially the use of drugs so much use of drugs and and so much drugs that interact with each other and and you know and and cause so many more problems you know so uh yeah it's 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 a huge field you know <laughs> uh, can you can you explain just briefly because um, some people maybe want to imagine what it is what does OFT look like so, for example, somebody comes, you have an OFT uh, session, and, and what, what, what happens? Well, I mean, the first thing is that we, we, we talk to the person and we validate and we listen. You know, that's the first thing that happens is that we really listen. We, don't, we, try, we create this space of openness and listening and validating. And we usually do this by just being very open and uh, honest and authentic with the person, you know. And oftentimes, you know, if it's someone coming for the first time for OFT, I will explain the principles. I, I will explain that, you know, there's nothing wrong. You know, your body is ready to heal. You know, the, all these symptoms mean that you're ready to heal. The fact that you're looking to heal means that you're ready for that. And then I will explain how we go about doing that, which is number one, we have to get in touch with our feelings. We have to get in touch with, you know, what's challenging and difficult inside of ourselves that we maybe haven't been aware of for a long time. And so I explain how we do that, which is to relax the nervous system, to help the mind get out of the way. And so what we do is we touch the back, we touch the kidneys, we touch the spine in a very neutral way. And we wait for the body to unwind, to, to relax, to feel like, oh, it's not going to be judged. It's safe here. And oftentimes what happens is the person after about 20 minutes or 30 minutes of the touch on the back, they, their body starts to relax. You, you know that you've received and, and you start to feel like, oh, oh, I often, I often describe it to getting into a hot bath. You know, you've really stressed all day. You get in the hot bath and your whole nervous system just goes, ah, oh. or, you know, wine does the same thing, right? So when the nervous system, so that's the first stage, relax the nervous system and help the mind get out of the way. So that when we turn over, the second stage is we turn over and we help the person get more in touch with their feelings by touching their abdomen, their belly, which is, you know, is, there's a lot of awareness now that that's where we feel our feelings. They're, they're in our belly, they're in our body, you know, and so, and, and then that's the second part of OFT, which is just to get in touch with these feelings without the mind's involvement. That, that's it, basically. That's, that's OFT. It's very simple. So in the OFT, uh, when people come to, to study it, mm -hmm. get more, they will learn how, how to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they will learn primarily through, through um, their interaction with me uh, because I'm, I'm holding a transmission. And uh, so just being in my aura and just being aware of like what that's like, you know, and of course I give lots of information. I, I go into the healing principles. I teach these chants, you know, this inner alchemy approach as well, like inner meditations to learn how to be more neutral, to be more in a place of acceptance with people so yeah it's it's a learning process it's a very gentle process uh, i like to say we create a space of no harm no no guilt no shame no blame you know uh, in our in our classes so yeah so as you said the, the person who is giving that she has to be this neutral space yes we don't want to interfere with the body's natural healing process. Exactly, exactly. That that is one of the hardest. That's one of the hardest things to try and transmit to people because we're so we're so living in a sort of fix it world, you know. And and uh, and of course there are little things that we learn in OFT to support that, you know. But the main understanding is to allow the body to unwind naturally. Yeah. 
So, Andre, I want to thank you so much for sharing all <laughs> the information with you. <laughs> great. I really enjoyed it, Alita. So it was wow. great questions. Yeah. Went a little bit, went a little bit longer than we thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. How long is it? It's, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It's probably 30 minutes or something. I don't know, but I hope that you managed to say a few things so that mm. people have a much more feeling uh, what OFT is. Great. I, I'm very grateful for, for having OFT and um, receiving OFT and witnessing the power of OFT. And I'm sure that if more people take this uh, knowledge and this this awareness how to to do it, uh, we will help so much ourselves in the times that we live in to be more relaxed and to to give space for healing to naturally. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Many times we think ah, having a shame is not a sickness. Uh, for example, it's nothing. It's not a big problem. But if we constrict and constrict for a long time, it can become and can lead to a specific um, deeper uh, sickness because yeah. we we resist a part of us and yeah. this part we start to suffer at one point. So we should not underestimate any symptoms. And basically, OFT is somehow helping us to. To, to flow more, our life force to flow, flow more. Yeah, that's that's the simplest definition. It's, it's assisting our life force to flow more. Perfect, perfect definition. Yeah, and, and I like because I've seen you many times uh, when I was translating for you during all of these sessions that you have absolutely one and the same approach. No matter if somebody comes to you with just a small problem or with a bigger problem, you are doing it with the same love, devotion, and when you accept it as something natural, you know, having this sickness is something natural, I can see in the person's body immediately this relaxation of accepting this illness. And, it, it, and isn't this in the gene keys that we need to allow, accept and embrace where we are in order to, to, to bring more of our gifts forward. So I feel that it's also same approach in a way to life. Mm. A lot of what does, accepting it, but you put this um, amazing way how, how we can support people. So I want to thank you for sharing about OFT, and I'm very excited to, to continue and we have an OFT soon. Yes, we do. We're starting it. We're starting a whole new training program in Bulgaria. So uh, I'm really yeah excited about that and. So thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you, Elisa. I'll speak again on some very interesting topics. So, bye for now. Bye.